Hi, this is Joel Persinger. I'm the Gun Guy. Thank you very much for all of your support on Gun Guy TV. I'm very grateful for all that you do, and I'm never going to stop telling you that. I have with me for the first time ever a, uh, a fellow I've been hoping would come on the show for a long time, and that is Eric Pratt from uh, Gun Owners of America. And I was telling Eric earlier, I want to show you, and it just happens to be sitting on my desk for some reason. I am actually a life member of GOA. There's my official uh, proof right there, just thank so that you, when pe people can say, you know, wow, you, really? Yes, I really, really am. And there you are. So, Eric, thank you very much for coming on the show. I appreciate it. I don't know how much money I owe you, but you'll have to send me a bill later. <laughs> well, absolutely. Thanks so much for having me, Joel. It was a pleasure to be with you, uh, a life member uh, on the show together. So uh, this I, is fantastic. I knew that would get me something. I just wasn't sure what it was. I had to hold it up there just in case. I'm hoping that you can give us a, a better view of what's happening, happening nationally. Where are we winning? Where are the challenges? How can we help gun owners of America fight this battle and, and those kind of things? And so I'm, if you don't mind, I'm going to kind of turn it over to you and let you go. How's that sound? Sounds fantastic. And off you go. Well, just, so in case anybody's not familiar with gun owners of America, we are the no compromise gun lobby in Washington, D.C. We have over two million members and activists who are extremely loud uh, and fantastic. In fact, the New York Times credited uh, GOA members with killing Obama's 2013 gun control. And then uh, after we were able to kill gun control in 2016, Harry Reid uh, said that gun owners of America is worse than bad. Uh, so that's a pretty good uh, compliment coming from Harry Reid. But like I said, you know, congressional offices tell us that our members are very loud uh, in the states. We're actually the original organization that pushed for uh, constitutional carry, which we now have in 17 states, 17 states with permitless carry. Uh, we'd love to bring uh, California along someday, but I, I guess first uh, we just like to get you to sh to a shall issue status, right, Joel? <laughs> uh, absolutely, uh, but you know, actually, it is getting better here. We're not um, by any means shall issue, but the sheriffs here—there are 58 sheriffs in the state, oh. the vast majority of whom issue in some fashion or Good. other. So we're moving in the right direction, but we got a long way to go. So any help we can Good. get, we'll certainly take. So uh, obviously, you know, I know you've had Sam Peretti's on uh, quite a bit, and, and he's the executive director of Gun Owners of California. Uh, Gun Owners of America handles the remainder of the nation as well as uh, the Congress, where we really put a lot of resources into and uh, really bring a no compromise approach there. Uh, one of the recent battles that we've been fighting, I actually had some good success with, is uh, the battle uh, the, the nomination for, uh, to, to head the ATF, Chuck Canterbury, uh, he has supported quite a bit of gun control. So we were disappointed to see that uh, he was put forward in the first place. For example, he supports uh, red flag gun confiscation laws, uh, which is a huge problem. I mean, as you know, uh, having it there in, in California and, of course, uh, over a dozen other states have it as well. You know, your, your, your guns can be taken from you if somebody thinks that you're a threat, uh, which means that those who are scared of guns will be empowered to have your guns taken away. I mean, you, know, you think about it, Joel, we live in a society where kids are uh, suspended from school because they post a, a picture or a video of them at the range or because they bite their Pop-Tart into the shape of a gun. I mean, you know, these are considered threatening acts. Heck, we've even seen situations where cops at restaurants are asked to leave their guns in their cars. So, you know, we've become such a nation of snowflakes in, in many ways, you know, who, who just get scared and, uh, you know, by the mere sight of an AR-15 on a shirt. So, uh, you know, these red flag laws can just have the tremendous ability to be abused. Uh, and, you know, people can be easily reported. And so with Canterbury being put forward and him supporting these red flag laws, he would become a lobbyist inside the administration for these red flag gun grab laws uh, to, to bring it to the rest of the nation. Um, you know, we, uh, we we're already seeing that with the attorney general, William Barr, who is a supporter of gun control. And uh, he's been pushing things like universal background checks, uh, walking uh, into senators' offices and uh, pushing uh, things like that. So, you know, having uh, a very key position like that with a um, with somebody who supports gun control was just uh, a non-starter for us. So, 
we generated quite a bit of heat. We, we got our activists uh, mobilized, uh, contact, had them contacting their senators. Um, I think we had almost uh, a million uh, contacts into the Senate on Canterbury alone. Uh, and so what we ended up with is four key senators, Republican senators who, was, who just said, you know what, we can't support them. It was Mike Lee of uh, Utah, Josh Hawley of Missouri, John Kennedy of Louisiana, and Ben Sass of Nebraska. I think it's good to you know, really plug these guys and, and for people to thank them uh, for what they did. Because in, in, in publicly saying we're not going to support the Canterbury nomination, as of now, that nomination is dead. It's off the table. Uh, he was supposed to be voted on, I think, about a, a month ago. And uh, when it became public that these four uh, who are on the Judiciary Committee weren't going to support him, uh, Judiciary Committee just pulled the nomination. Uh, right now, I mean, you've got the, the FOP. He's the head of the FOP. So the FOP is plugging for him. Uh, the White House is making calls. Uh, trying to get these guys to change their minds. But so far, that hasn't happened uh, because, uh, hey, let's face it, uh, when you're generating anywhere between 700,000 and a million messages into the Senate, uh, the, the, people, uh, the, the senators are hearing from the people uh, loud and clear. So anyway, that's a, a very exciting um, uh, a victory or a, a temporary victory, at least for now, uh, that we have on the Canterbury nomination. Would it be positive for gun owners to contact these uh, senators and thank them for and the work that they're them. doing? Can you give me yes. their names again? I've got Ben Sass and Mike Lee, and the other two I didn't quite get. Josh Hawley of Missouri and John Kennedy of Louisiana. And in fact, if people go to our website at gunowners.org, we have an alert there at the top of the page. And what we specialize in doing, Joel, and I think you know this, is that uh, we give people alerts uh, with pre and, and uh, an action item with a pre-written text where they can uh, just send it as is with just a couple clicks of their mouse, or they can uh, edit it. I, you know, a lot of times just having something written sort of gets the ball rolling, and so people will add more. They can subtract from. Uh, the letter, if they're, you know, if they want to say something differently, uh, but that ends up then generating a, a lot of unique messages uh, to the Hill, which is also helpful. Uh, but uh, the big key is just to uh, really inundate them, but especially for those four, yes, to thank them. And so we've got um, an alert where people can send letters to them, thanking them for the stance that they've taken and encouraging them to stand strong because let's face it, uh, they are coming under pressure from the White House. And, uh, you know, I mean, you know, party politics, like it or not, I mean, that, that's a big part of Washington. And uh, if they're not going to, you know, support the president's uh, uh, pick, you know, then there's going to be threats made against them or we're not going to help you in your upcoming election or, you know, or we're going to support a, a primary opponent. I mean, these are the way these games are played and they do it on both sides, Republican and Democrat. But anyway, that's why it, it's really important to encourage these guys and let them know uh, we are behind you 100%. So what I will do if you're watching this is I'll make sure that the links to those things are in the description. Eric and I will talk about that Fantastic. after the show, and I'll make sure I get those links. We'll put those in the description for you so that you don't have to go hunting for them, and that way you can just go right to there. Eric, is there a way for people, even if they're not members of GOA, although I want to tell you if you're watching this, if you're not a member of GOA, you need to be, but if you're, if you're not a member, can you still sign up for the alerts? Absolutely, yeah. Um, if you're on a computer, it'll be at the top of the page. If you're on your mobile, it changes it up a little bit different. It puts it at the bottom. Uh, you just scroll down to the bottom. But uh, there at gunowners.org, uh, you just put in your name and uh, your zip code and your address, because then that way it uh, locates not only who your senators are, but your representative that you would be contacting. And then that way, once you do that, once you uh, click on an alert, when we send you an alert, uh, you'll easily, you'll, it'll just provide you uh, automatically uh, your um, representative or senators uh, to email, depending on what, what the alert is. So, uh, yeah, you know, we, we make it very easy, uh, try to give people the, the tools to uh, really be put in the heat on their legislators. Uh, but it all starts at gunowners.org and, it, and it's free. So, uh, you know, please sign up.
Absolutely. Now, I, I, Canterbury is kind of obscure. Not not that he's obscure, but from the standpoint of an average watcher of the news, red flag laws have been in everybody's face. But Canterbury's kind of in the in the weeds there, where unless you're really paying attention, the fact that he was put up as a nominee and the fact that he is not the right nominee for us would not right. be something that you would readily. Uh, no, unless you were really looking for that information. How how often do you find that these types of nominees that aren't really front and center are vital to to keeping the Second Amendment safe? Uh, well, certainly uh, judges would be uh, key nominations and attorney general, which we fought the battle on that earlier in the year when Sessions uh, stepped down because we knew that uh, the, the choice of William Barr was going to be a problem, and indeed he has been a problem. Uh, but I think, you know, even though we, we lost that battle on William Barr, we still fought the battle. When I say fought the battle, I mean we generated uh, a lot of opposition, and uh, I think doing that work has helped now with uh, this battle on the ATF director because uh, people heard even though a lot of senators who should have known better still ended up voting for him, uh, now they've seen what Barr has turned out to be. And, and I mentioned earlier, he has been walking the halls of Congress uh, with a you know gun control plan uh, that that he's shopping around to different offices. And so now that they've seen that, now when gun owners are uh, again making their voices heard on this latest uh, nominee, uh, Chuck Canterbury. Um, I think this time there, there's been a, uh, a much more, um, uh, they've been much more likely now uh, to, to listen uh, and say, you know what, uh, yeah, these are real uh, gun owners' concerns. We don't want that to happen again because having an ATF director uh, that is just, you know, sold out, I don't want to say sold out for the the, the uh, for gun control, but uh, my goodness, when you support red flag laws, he said he's open to a semi-auto ban. Uh, I mean, th this would not be good news for America's gun owners for sure. So I, I think those two picks, and and certainly judges, and and we watch the judges that are put forward, and and when we see uh, a problem with judges, uh, any particular judge that's uh, taken uh, an anti-gun stand in any of his opinions at the lower level. Uh, if they're put forward for a higher level, we'll rally the troops, uh, you know, get urge uh, senators to vote no, that kind of thing. Uh, other than that, uh, you know, th those are, are probably the, the three main things, judges, attorney general, and ATF director. I, I hear from viewers a lot and listeners of the podcast a lot that they have come to the conclusion that their voice means nothing that their vote means nothing, that if they contact, you know, we're in California and our senators are uh, Dianne Feinstein and Kamala Harris. Now, if that doesn't discourage you, if you're a Californian, nothing on the earth will. And so people will feel that their voice means nothing in general if their voice means nothing within their own state. What would you say to somebody who feels that way, who feels like they're, they're really the, the process of voicing their opinion to their legislators or legislators in general doesn't carry any weight? Well, certainly for those of us outside of California, I mean, we, we really hurt for you guys because we know it, it, it's probably the toughest state uh, in the union on a lot of issues, including Second Amendment issues. Uh, but just so that, you know, just, and hopefully it's an encouragement to you guys, um, gun rights are advancing outside of California, certainly at the state level. We're now, you know, in, in 2000, we only had one state with constitutional carry. Now we have 17. So this is a movement that, that's been growing. Um, at the same time, we've got some real exciting court cases that could be a real boom, uh, boon and, and benefit for people in states like uh, California and, and, and other states as well, uh, who, you know, states where people are living behind enemy lines. One case would be the, uh, the New York case, which is going before the Supreme Court in December. And, and gun owners has submitted a brief in that case. Uh, and it's one that's challenging the prohibitions on transporting unloaded handguns in New York. I mean, you know, in New York City, 
uh, you've only got seven places outside of your home where you can take a handgun. I mean, this is the kind of thing that the people of New York City face. I mean, if they have a, a home in upper state New York, they can't take their handguns there uh, because the premises permit is basically that. I mean, it's, it's for use there on that premises only. I mean, really, it's outrageous. I mean, imagine if, you know, your First Amendment right only applied in seven places uh, in the city or in the state. I mean, that would be crazy. So, you know, our brief uh, raises arguments that will uh, certainly benefit people of New York City, but also people anywhere in the country, including uh, California, because our brief challenges the whole idea of judicial interest balancing, you know, or the idea that if the government has a compelling state interest, like let's say per, uh, preserving safety, that this can override a constitutionally protected right, like the right protected by the Second Amendment. And of course, that's a bogus idea uh, that uh, that the state's interest in safety could override any of our God-given uh, rights, which are protected by the Constitution. So, you know, our brief argues that the Second Amendment itself contains the standard that should be used. Uh, when you read the Second Amendment, it says uh, the right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed, or as Scalia put it, uh, you know, we need to look at the text, history, and the tradition of the Second Amendment. So there's actually a lot of court cases around the country now that, that have been put on hold because they're looking to see what the Supreme Court does in this case. I mean, this could be a real game changer for people living in California or Washington or uh, Illinois or Oregon or many other anti-gun states. So that's one of just one of the, the cases that we're involved in uh, that, that could have a real exciting result. I should also mention, I'm sure a case that you're real familiar with is the Duncan versus Becerra case dealing with uh, magazines. And in that one, you know, we make the point, look, the Second Amendment is not just about self-defense against petty criminals, although that's certainly important, but it's about self-defense against the government. And so that's why a magazine ban uh, is so pernicious, like the one that uh, California has imposed. So that's one that that's also uh, kicking up through the courts. But so anyway, uh, just to encourage uh, people who uh, may be living behind enemy lines and, you know, the, the things are real tough in your state, know that there's some good court cases out there that can make a difference, just like the Heller case made a difference, just like the McDonald case made a difference. And then the other thing I would say is this, look, ever since the, the August shootings, uh, you know, if you've watched anything in the news, you know that there was a big push for gun control. I mean, Democrats were demanding bring Congress back and uh, the media was uh, pushing this narrative, bring Congress back, pu push gun control, uh, pass gun control. You know, we need to do something. And so um, we responded as well. We ginned up our uh, email alerts and our uh, legislative alerts uh, through snail mail. And we generated over 3 million messages from our grassroots into the offices of Republicans in, in the House, Senate, and in the White House. Uh, over 3 million grassroots messages. I mean, it was a deluge. And the exciting thing is, we, we've actually heard back from leadership offices that have told us, they said, you know, gun control would have already passed except for the fact that your members have been so loud and have put so much heat on legislators, it has slowed things down. And it slowed things down enough. I mean, delay is always our friend when we're talking about trying to kill gun control legislation. And then, you know, once the impeachment talks, uh, as bogus as it may be, once those talks uh, started, that just threw all gun control off the table uh, for good, at least for now. Uh, and, and in saying that, I don't want to put people to sleep thinking, OK, you know, don't need to take action. Uh, no, the, the, the reason we're here now in such a good place is because people have been taking action and they have been responding to the alerts. But so just to encourage people, uh, the alerts that you respond to and, uh, you know, clicking that mouse and sending a message to your legislators makes a tremendous difference, but I don't want to be a victim of our success either. We're now, you know, people fall asleep and uh, think that, uh, you know, we don't have to take action anymore. We need to, you know, we're still putting out alerts as, as we learn things that are going on and say, hey, you know, they need to hear from you on this issue or this issue. Uh, but right now we're probably uh, since August in the best position that uh, we had been for, for quite a while, uh, but it's thanks to the power 
and the the loud voice of the grassroots. Eric, you made a comment that delay is always our friend. Can you elaborate on why that is? Well, quite frankly, the other side wants to use emotion to ram things through. And, you know, thankfully, the founding fathers were brilliant. They gave us a system with multitude of checks and balances. Uh, we're not a democracy. We are a republic. You know, a democracy is the 51 percent rules. But in a republic, you actually not only have checks and balances on the officials who are in office, uh, but you also have check and balance against the, what's otherwise known as the tyranny of the majority. And uh, so w by pushing, uh, pushing the ways that we're able to get delay um, always helps, especially for, you know, uh, the left who's trying to use the, the emotion so that people won't really consider the facts. I mean, you know, if you give the, the, you know, people the narrative, well, we have to do we have to do something about these guns because people are being killed. You know, they're, they're, of course, ignoring the fact that, well, actually, more lives are being saved with guns than are being taken. Uh, in, in fact, uh, the, the best uh, uh, figures that we have on that is anywhere from 16 to 100 times more often uh, every year, every day. In fact, guns are being used to save life. Uh, as opposed to take life. So, you know, these are the, the types of facts that uh, many times get lost and drowned out in, in the rush to, quote unquote, do something uh, uh, when, you know, the media is pushing something so hard. So anyway, I mean, you can see why the left, uh, they, why they want to get rid of things like the, the filibuster. Uh, they want to get rid of the Electoral College and they're talking about packing the courts. I mean, they're they're trying to erase the checks and balances that exist. Uh, thankfully, our founding fathers gave us many, uh, and it, they really saved our bacon. Uh, but uh, you know, one of the greatest ways that that you know that that we can uh, bring about delay is just by raising a loud outcry from the grassroots. Because uh, I, I think when, especially in times right after, uh, you know, like the shootings that we saw in August, I think people would otherwise be very dispirited when, when they see how hard the media is pressing. And uh, they get dispirited and they think, you know, it's not going to do any good to, uh, uh, you know, to, you know, send a letter or make a phone call. And then that's where we come in and we're saying, hey, we're fighting this. And we need you to fight alongside of us because we can't do this alone. You know, the more people that we have, the louder voice that we're going to have resonating in the halls of Congress. And, and, and as we start doing alert after alert, you know, we're telling them, hey, we're up to a million messages. Uh, a couple of weeks later, hey, we're up to two million messages. Now we've, we're up to over three million messages. Uh, and I think pe that, that encourages people and they see that their work is making a difference when you're part of a team when, when you're part of a bigger group, you know, uh, you know, the, the media and the left, they try to make us feel like we're alone and they use polls and things like that. Like I said, to dispirit us, uh, what we're trying to do is encourage people and say, Hey, your work is making a difference. What's going on with red flag laws nationally? So uh, just uh, real quick on red flag laws. Uh, these are laws that would allow a, fam a family member, a former dating partner. Uh, you know, it can vary according to state, uh, but there is federal uh, legislation as well. But basically, family member or a, a dating partner, former dating partner, even going back to third grade to bring a complaint against you. And based only on an allegation, that you pose significant danger to self or others, your guns can be confiscated. And the key here is the word allegation, because that's all it takes is an allegation with no due process. It's kind of ironic that uh, in the midst of this, uh, you know, all the hubbub over uh, impeachment, the, the president has said, hey, I deserve due process. I should be able to face my accuser. Well, you know what? 
Uh, we as gun owners should champion due process. And that's the problem with these red flag laws is that there's no due process before your guns are taken. No attorney representing you, no facing your accuser, no trial by jury. Simply a mere allegation can result in you losing your gun rights. And there's a couple of horrendous cases uh, that we've seen where this has really been an issue. One is Gary Willis of Maryland. Uh, he had a family argument. It wasn't violent or anything like that, but uh, one member in wanting to get back at him filed a false uh, accusation against him. So, you know, uh, under Maryland's red flag law. So the police showed up at 517 a.m. in the morning. Now, here's the problem with that. You know, you as a homeowner know, <laughs> you know, hey, I didn't call, uh, you know, for, for pizza delivery uh, at that hour. So if somebody's banging on your door at 5.17 a.m. in the morning, uh, how do you answer the door? Probably with gun in hand. I've had dozens of people tell me, yeah, that's how I'm answering the door at that hour of the morning. Well, that's how he answered the door, with gun in hand. Uh, sadly, that uh, morning's um, meeting, shall we say, between he and the police ended up with him being shot and killed. Gary Willis is dead. Uh, the family was horrified, said this guy wouldn't hurt a fly. I mean, it was just horrid that all this came about because of a family member doing this to him because of a, a fam, uh, you know, an argument. Uh, then there was uh, more recently uh, a case out of Massachusetts where 84 year old Korean uh, era uh, military veteran who um, I was going to say volunteers his time, but he may get uh, paid for doing this. He's a, like a school guard uh, or a, a crossing guard at, at a school. And anyway, he was at, um, I forget if it was IHOP or some other restaurant, but anyway, he was talking to somebody else. He was sharing his concerns uh, about how the school resource officer there at the school uh, leaves during the day to go run errands. And so he mentioned, you know, with him gone, there could be a school shooting or something like that. Somebody could shoot up the school. Well, the waitress overheard part of the conversation, heard the part about shooting up the school and thought, oh, she had some hot tip about a guy who was planning a school shooting, reports him, police show up and take his firearms. Again, no due process whatsoever. Thankfully, he, he didn't end up dead, uh, but, but they, they took his guns. And of course, now you've got to go back to court. Uh, you've got to you know, hire an attorney later uh, to go prove your innocence. You know, isn't that backwards? You know, government's supposed to prove you guilty. Now he's having to prove his that, that he's innocent uh, to get his guns back. I mean, see, this is the danger of these red flag laws. Well, uh, they're trying to, you know, right now, 17 states uh, have them, including California. Um, they're pushing it at the national level. They're, they're trying to even, and one of the things that we do is, you know, we watch a lot of legislation. And so we saw that they were trying to put it into a a pro-woman bill, you know, a woman, uh, a violence against women act. So they, they tried to put it in there. We were able to, to defeat that and stop that. Uh, but, you know, they try to put it in, in different places so that they can impose it nationally. Thankfully, so far, we've been able to beat them back. In fact, this was part of the, the three million messages where uh, these messages are saying, we don't want red flag laws, we don't want universal background checks, and we don't want a semi-auto ban. And uh, that's what we've been pushing really hard through our email alerts, our snail mail alerts, uh, through gunowners.org. Is there anything else that we haven't covered that you feel like we need to cover? No, I, th I think we, uh, we covered the, the hot topics that, that are going on right now, uh, at least politically regarding uh, our Second Amendment rights and the attacks against them. We talked about what's going on in the courts. Again, if people want to get involved uh, with us at Gun Owners, of America, go to our website at gun, gunowners.org and uh, sign up for the alerts. I mean, that's where it all starts. It's free, and uh, you know we're not going to load up your your inbox, uh, you know, with irrelevant stuff. We are lobbying for the 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 things that are are threatening our rights, and that's what we're getting people to to rally and make their voice heard. Uh, and if there's no threat going on, then you're not going to hear from us. Because quite frankly, ultimately, we'd like to work ourselves out of a job where our Second Amendment protected rights uh, were so secure that there's no longer a need for gun owners of America or any other gun group for that matter. And we can uh, actually, you know, 
uh, have a productive business like what you're doing, uh, Joel, or, you know, something else. I mean, I'm kind of a, a teacher by trade. I, I actually still do uh, teach government students in my off hours uh, through uh, an internet school. But anyway, I teach civil government. Oh, cool. uh, I, I would love to do that full time, uh, but I can't because alas, you know, I'm uh, helping protect our Second yeah. Amendment rights, which by the way, I, I love doing. I mean, I, I love, uh, the, you know, I think defense against tyranny and being able to protect your home against any invasion, you know, whatever it is, is super important. So I love doing what I'm doing. Uh, but if I didn't have to do this, I'd, I'd be teaching. Uh, so anyway, uh, you know, uh, back to the, the point, though, uh, you know, sign up uh, at uh, gunowners.org and, and start getting our email list. And uh, we'll, we'll put you to work, so to speak. Now, you guys keep it. One of the things I do appreciate about your organization is you keep it pretty lean and mean. I mean, don't you? You're not overburdened with staff and that kind of stuff. Can you talk about that briefly? No, we're not. Uh, and, you know, quite frankly, our, um, uh, you know, for those who want to become members, uh, you know, $20 is probably the, the, the cheapest uh, place in, you know, in the business. For $20, that gets you a membership for a year. We also have a Patriot level, which is a monthly uh, contribution. And we're very thankful for uh, the people who are doing that because, uh, let's face it, I mean, you know, that, that helps us keep the lights on, helps us, uh, you know, keep the lobbyists uh, you know, on Capitol Hill and, and the, the battles that we're fighting in the courts. And, and then we have a life membership as well, uh, which is at a $500 level. Uh, you know, all this is, is very important uh, for us to, you know, because we've, we've got to have guys who are researching and, and reading the bills and things like that, uh, looking for the places where, they're like I was mentioning earlier, you know, Violence Against Women Act. Who would think there'd be anything bad in that? Well, actually, there was, if, if it's coming out of Nancy Pelosi's house, you could almost guess there's going to be something wrong with it, and there was, uh, because they, they crammed all kinds of things, including uh, a red flag uh, provision. So, you know, these are the things that, that, that we're doing, and this is how people can, uh, you know, join with us and, and be a part of the fight with us. Well, Eric, thank you very much for being part of the show. I really appreciate it. I hope you'll be willing to come back and do it again. I always say that Absolutely. while we're on the show because then I've got you hooked now because it's recorded. <laughs> and I, you know, you can't later you can't later say no because you just said yes. See, that's it's my manipulative way of doing things. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful week. I really do appreciate yeah. it. Same to you, Joel. Thanks so much. Hey, if you've stuck with us this long, you're awesome. You are a Second Amendment supporter because you've stuck uh, through this thing for about an hour or so. I'm very grateful. Have a wonderful week wherever you go, whatever you do. Please be safe.